Kyle Smith, here's the voice of the Cougs, Matt Chesano. Great to be with you here at Zeppos. It is that time of the week. It is the Kyle Smith Show here, as it is usually what we do, Coach, in, in the formula of this, of this deal. We started last week. You know, Usually we kind of go back to the weekend, Thursday, Saturday, and we'll do that in just a moment. But I want to start out looking ahead. This is one of the most anticipated weeks of the whole year for Cougar basketball. It's the Clay Thompson jersey raising on Saturday. Everybody's so excited to get Clay back and honor him, not only for what he's done as a student athlete, but beyond it in representing Washington State. And I can personally say at the Cal football game, he's always there. Cal basketball, he, was, he wasn't there this past week, couldn't make it, but he's often there and he's around the Bay Area. He's such an active Coug and it's going to be great to get him back in Beasley. No, no doubt. He's uh, right now the <laughs> the most famous one right now for sure and our guys are really tickled and want to want to please them and you know show out and have a good good performance on saturday no question and and the ticket sales have been great it's, there's going to be a buzz in the arena uh we we know that uh coupled with that just last uh, time there was a homestand to start pack play there was uh an adult beverage or two served for the first time in Beasley, which it gets a round of applause. Hey, yeah, hey. for sure. Help always helps the atmosphere. And, <laughs> no doubt. And uh, Craig, I got to do it. Craig Elo was trying to get me to say on air there was a palpable buzz in the building, <laughs> and I was like, I can't, I can't. Yeah. But, but I like it. I like it. Was, it. Well, it was great. It was great. But but it, it, things, you know, I, I know you're, you're you're building things up and trying to work through it and. I don't want to harp on it too much, but you are banged up. That is part of the deal. You've got four injured, prominent player contributors. It's you could you could say, you know what, thirty-two to forty-five points of your you know seventy to seventy-five is pulled out right now from the lineup. Uh, you know, it, it's obviously challenging. It just changes uh, who we are. It's not so much the uh, points per game, but just uh, you know, without Jalen, without Marvin, without Tony, they're all we're pretty quick. We're, we're a quick team, and and without them, we just changes. We got to adjust a little bit, and you know, no one's gonna feel sorry for us. Um, and uh, we had a, obviously a tough one on Saturday, but uh, you know, our guys they're in good spirits, and we're we'll, looking forward to Thursday. In football, and you know, Coach Leach always used to say, "We're not talking about it. There, there, we're not gonna do it. There's no excuses." And now we'll talk. And Nick Rolovich, we'll see what he wants to do. <laughs> what Coach Rolo wants to do, but. But in, in terms of basketball, you know, in football, that's the sport. That, yeah. That's the game. The game is, is your body and toughness. In hoops, you don't usually have four injured players. That, that, how, have you ever dealt with this before? Um, this, you know, four? I, I, I've had one year at Columbia when I was there. We had, we had just a couple nagging things that wouldn't go away. And, and I remember talking to my AD at the end of the year, and she was, she was on me pretty hard. And I was like, you know, I was like, well, no one's going to feel sorry. She didn't feel sorry for us either, but we – um, we got better than that. And it's just something that's part of the game. And honestly, we're not, I'm so, you always start to reevaluate, are, are we practicing too hard? Are we going, you know, doing, right. you know, or, you know, this and that. And we're pretty, I think we're in good, in the ballpark and some of them little fluky things. And, um, hopefully, uh, you know, I think, well, I think Tony's was the guy rolled into his ankle with a 30 seconds to go in the game. And like, um, you know, and he played really well and averaged 13 and eight on that home stand, And then not, not to have them, to just it just affects your team. It's not it's the basketball. It's hard to explain. Where you know, guy get you know, you'll guy will file a lineup. I think it's like Utah that right now. The Jazz, like Mike Conley's not there, and then you start playing together, and they're playing mm -hmm. really well. When he's back in the lineup, it changes your the chemistry is a big part of basketball. I can put it other the word. It's probably a little different than football or other sports because you're you're playing, you're connected all the time. So that's the hard part. Is like you can live with one injury and guy. All right, he's out. Maybe he's out. If he's out for the year, okay. We we there's no other way to do it. We got to survive and figure it out. But when they're in out, and then you're in an unanticipated thing, and it takes time to adjust to. Speaking of which, and I don't know how much you can talk about it. I don't know the deal, but Dion James tweeted out he had a surgery that apparently went well. You know, Dion collapsed on the court in the Cayman Islands. It was really scary and. Uh, it sounded like he had a, a heart issue, and yep. I don't know what the surgery was, and it's, but I'm really glad it went well. And, and I don't know 100% yeah. more because okay. I'm, I'm an idiot, not, <laughs> not because uh, I've been told. I've been told, but basically, uh, and you know, just in case, uh, you know, just for, something he has for the rest of his life a little bit, yeah. just in case then something happens. And um, we're, like I said, thoughts and prayers. That was, uh, in a lot of ways, the best thing that happened is that we caught it, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it was a very scary moment. Uh, down there and 
I'm sure jolted our guys in that, and you'd think that would be the only injury we'd have to deal with this year. Yeah, no, yeah, and it's been far from it. You know, and, yeah. and it's been Jalen Shedd, it's been Tony Miller, and uh, Marvin, and it's been Marvin, and, yeah. and knocking, on, knocking on wood. You, well, you'd say that's it. How many more can there be? Wait, we, we, Ryan had an MRI oh, Ryan. today. Oh, he did? Uh, he's got a little hot spot that uh, – What, but is, I think what does that mean? Um, it's a pre preview to, a, like, a uh, stress fracture, oh, so you got to no. be very sure. So, but – Caught it. Hopefully, we'll be able to, you know, turn down his reps. And Isaac's dealing with a little shoulder thing. I don't even like talking about these things. Oh, but for goodness the, 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 Yeah, no. It's, wow. <laughs> we're all right. It's we're, a lot. We'll be all right. Well, and, and part of why I bring it up, so let's go back a little bit. Let's go sure. back to Haas Pavilion and, and to Maples, the game against Stanford, which was a, a really tough one. And, you know, it struck me in deep into the second half, you're down big, and, and you wanted some offense. And, and I, I've seen practice. I know Deron Henson can really shoot, and he came in as a shooter, six foot seven or so, looks apart, scored a little bit at Utah State. And, and you, you bring him in, and I'm, I'm looking at the bench, and I'm trying to work through it and the breaks and the box score and realize part of it is a credit to Deron. I'm sure he's practiced very hard, and you want him out there. Part of it is you're out of guys. <laughs> yeah, no. You, you're out of bot. There's no one else. You know what? You can't uh... – when you transition, like I said, then people know the story that we were down to at one point three guys in the program, and I think it was May at some point. So whatever. So I was like, and Duran stepped up, wanted to be in the program, and it just the way it fell out, we ended up with like five guys kind of playing the same position or trying to mix and match, and he's kind of the odd man out, um, and based on what we're doing. But he's I've had several conversations with him, and just keep a pulse on him, and just you know, got to it, it's going to be somebody. You have 15 guys on a team. It's going to be eight guys that are playing a good chunk. You have nine and ten that need to be ready in case of injury. And then that 11 through 15 is a tough roll. And if guys, when they get their number called, you need to be have a great attitude because you don't know when it's going to happen. Um, Duran's been, you know, he's kept a good attitude. He's been getting better in practice, and, and he's a weapon. Um, so maybe maybe that's what we, comes out of this is maybe there's a role for him. Maybe – extends it and I think uh you know he he did he, he did what we know he can do yeah he can shoot and so you know we got to work with him on some other areas and if he can help us that's great what did you learn in the Cal game you, you were you were you were up big you're up 14 early you you didn't score more than three field goals from uh 743 left in the first to 1330 uh, I just looked it up 1331 in the second <laughs> Just saying. I had no idea. I, no, was, I really did. You, you, sco you scored three field goals in that stretch, but then you cut it to three points with yeah, 30 seconds left. No, it was a funny game. Uh, we came out, uh, played really well, um, and we got up big, and then Cal made an adjustment. We were up eight still, and that was a funky play that Noah made that came out with the intentional – Whatever the flag. Oh, yeah. So the official said he pulled his shoulder. So he kind of did. Well, he he, he kind of did. It was kind of so he wouldn't fall on his head. Well, he, here's the other funny part about it. And he's a strong kid. He's a great athlete. Yeah. He's a great athlete. The guy he pulled down was 260. 265. Yeah, yeah, was no, two, yeah, he no, was no, giving no. up a hundred, like about no. uh, 80 pounds or so. No, and I'm he, thinking, he, man, he's strong, but I don't know if he's no, that strong. No, no, Andre Kelly definitely flopped it out a little bit. <laughs> he's but, a big boy. But I, I knew the second they looked at it, his arm was kind of, it was almost like a horse collar. I'm like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I can't argue this one too much. Yeah. But it's kind of a big momentum change. And, and uh, you know, like there's something you do know, self evaluation, like how could I have stopped that? It was like a slow, bleeding 25 to 6 run. And, um, but we were playing really well. We were playing with a lot of confidence early, and, and that thing went – that possession ended up being a four-point possession. So it went eight to four. Then we couldn't get a bucket. And they made an adjustment. They played small, which they haven't done. Actually, I think we were really – it was really hard for them to score. And then they went small, and they started driving us a little bit. And we didn't uh, – we didn't make the adjustment there and keep them out of the paint. And, and But, you know, to their credit, uh, the guys that beat us were Paris Austin and Joel Brown. You know, they're which were guys that were like, hey, if they're going to beat us with those guys, and hat tip them, they did. And then Bradley was the one that we didn't we didn't control. He was he's a good player, and uh, on his home floor, and he hit the big three late that kind of um, put that thing away. But uh, you know, then like I said like the second half, uh, those young guys really Ryan, if I recall, Ryan, Noah, and DJ were out there a lot, yeah. and, and got that thing. And doggone it, DJ had a couple good looks, mm -hmm. and we were just playing well there, and did, they went zone and. We had a good group out there to score against, and it didn't happen, but hopefully they learned from it. Noah scored 16 in that ball game, uh, and efficiently, too. He got to yeah. the free throw line a lot. He was 6 for 6, 5 of 8 
from the field. He, he played a, a really good ball game, and, and you're looking at it, and you're trying to pull positives out of it, but Cal was predicted last in the league, and no. it's a road game. You're looking at it, and then, lo and behold, they beat Washington on Saturday and kind of flipped the whole rhetoric around their season on its head now into pack play with a new coach and whatever's yeah. going on there in Haas Pavilion. You, you know, um, knew that roster pretty well just um, being down there and – um, I I thought they had pretty people didn't understand. I think they had pretty good players in their program, even though they 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 were dysfunctional last year for whatever reason. Sure. I don't I don't know why, but and they lost just as But I know Andre Kelly's a good player. The guys that are playing for him and and Tisevich has been effective. And Tisevich made a jump for made a new yeah. coaching change, but he's in the program. Paris Austin's a fifth year senior, and uh, Matt Bradley's there. Matt Bradley, a guy. terrific yeah. player. He was a really highly recruited guy and had a really good year and he's yeah. averaging 20 games. So. Looks like a linebacker, by the yeah, way. Yeah, no, no, he's yeah. he would uh, Rolovich would like him. Yeah. He, 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 uh, <laughs> yeah. he's, but uh, that's what I'm saying. So they the, that group was, um, and they've kind of come together to credit to them and, and that win over Washington. I watched the end of that thing and made me feel a little better. Sure. I, I didn't think they're bad. I didn't. I don't think they're any bad teams. It's really the league's up this year and playing them on their home court. They're two and zero in league and. And uh, it'll be a hard trip for anyone. You go to Maples, you go to Stanford. It's tough from the tap. It was a brutal game last year. It was actually a little better, a lot better this year. Uh, <laughs> That's hard to believe. Yeah, yeah. It I was know. a really, really tough game last year. And, and uh, you know, the second half, you were dead even. Uh, but do, do you, when you get a game like that and it just feels like not much is working for you, do you flush it? Do you, do you just toss it? How do you – what do you talk to the guys about? What's your method and your tactic? It doesn't go your way. You've got a guy out there. Duran has played two minutes all year, and he's your leading scorer yeah. for a portion of the game. What do you do with that? Um, I think you try to keep everything the same. We always go in every game, respect everyone, fear no one. And same thing, we do a game review every after the weekend. We'll and you know we point out and there's if there's some positives to be gleaned, we'll we'll find them. It was harder to find them in that game. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, I watched like the first four minutes we were playing right. And mm. says, you know, and they hit a transition three to go up 10 to two. And I just think we kind of hung our heads and, and we're human beings. And I believe, I'm sure there was some psychology what happened there last year. And it was, it was tough. And, uh, and I took responsibility with our team too. It's like, you know what? I didn't prepare you guys the right way because I was kind of going, you know, I was like, hey, I was trying to give our guys confidence. Like, hey, we beat – when I was at San Francisco, we beat these guys last year. And they definitely – our guys definitely have respect for them. And, and I was thinking maybe a little too much because obviously beat them – you know, they said, hey, Stanford's really good. I'm like, oh, I know they're good, but we got to be, you know, believe. And and I think our confidence got chipped away a little bit. And like I said, we got into we're, – we're low on guys and – they got down and and they they hung in there and I was proud of them too in the sense that uh, you got to find things like they double the post all the time and and we were a big part of our prep was like how are we going to handle that and it was late in the game like four minutes ago and they're still doubling the post and and our guys still trying to beat it the right way so I was like that's a good sign that they're trying to do things right they're doing what their coach should do. Um, and we just got obviously we, we didn't defend very well. How often do you you pull the positives out? How often do you find a negative that you think is a learning point where you you don't want to beat a guy up, but you want to say, hey, this didn't go right. Let's let's look at that. It, it, you know what? I I feel like in this first year, and I've done this three times. I think this group needs a lot of positives. Mm. Um, I think uh, whatever they're, they're, they beat themselves up pretty good, and they've got some guys that really take a lot of pride. And they're not and they. You know, the, and there's that you got to develop a thick skin and start develop. But I think with uh, pointing out what they're doing well, and it's just kind of my nature. If you point out what they're doing well, this you're doing it, uh, some of the negative things start to fall by the wayside. Just kind of establish what good is. I just like, uh, you know, and some of my staff guys that you know some new ones. I said just like we had. I'll, I won't name the name, but it's a little thing. Like this summer, we're working out, and the guy's getting hurt every play, and he's you know kind of a baby. And I said, don't okay, just ignore it here. We're gonna. And I started pulling out like, hey, you're doing well in this, doing that. And that stuff has gone by the wayside. So that's kind of how my mode, you know, you can really, and we'll definitely certain guys, and certain guys want the criticism, want, want sure. hey, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? And, and so it's like, just let's, let's concentrate on these areas, defending, rebounding, take care of the ball, and, uh, and just get better. And, it's, and you're going to fail on certain things. So it's like, like I said, a ball screen coverage, I don't know exactly, you know, if you're in this ball screen, you're not going to go 10 for 10 guarding it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Eight for ten might be good enough to win most of the time, but so you got so you got to be able to live with. You can't hang on those mistakes. And coaches, that's a little bit what our program is like. 
Fleet, oh, thank goodness. There you go. That's a quesadilla. <laughs> For those listening and not watching here, that thank goodness was the quesadilla that just got popped on this. On this but uh, those things like, like, and you know what, we're, this is why it's important to look at our, our dad and everything is that like Jazz got scored late on a switch against Paris Austin against Cal, and we're like, gosh dang it, we shouldn't be switching with Jazz. The full course of the game, he defended well. Paris Austin made a tough shot going into his body. It's like, you know, the that data came. showed you was kind of an anomaly. Yeah, it's like, yeah, no, it's just whatever. He played a well, he played a good game. Yeah, he played, did some good things on that side of the ball. Yeah, um, interesting. You know that that, uh, and you got to point those out to him. It's like, hey, you know what? It was a big point in the game. We needed to make that play. It didn't happen. Could you have done better on that? Probably, but you know, the other ninety-eight percent of the game playing the right way and gave us a chance to win the game. So. You got to keep things in perspective that way. All right, we'll let, let you get chomp into this quesadilla here. How about it? We'll take a <laughs> I'm break. I'm all come about back. it. Absolutely. We'll take Thanks, a break. Thanks, man. You bet. We're live here at Zeppos. We'll come back here with Kyle Smith next. At U.S. Bank. <laughs> West Bank Cougar Coaches Show. Now on the break, a go-ahead hammer. Live from Zeppos with Cougar head coach Kyle Smith, here's the voice of the Cougs, Matt Chazanow. Back here live at Zeppos, it is the Kyle Smith Show. We're talking hoops here with Coach Smith, taking your questions right in in person or on Twitter. M underscore Chaz is a, a good way to do it. Uh, coach, you've got the quesadilla uh -huh. here. I saw you go quesadilla, salsa, then sour cream in that order. That's, is any that way play? you want to go. Any, I can mix matter. it up. I'm trying to be a better etiquette here than I do at home. <laughs> I'm sure right, of that. Right. You are, on, you are on camera a little bit, too. Oh, yeah. So there's, yeah there's that, that. we're good. <laughs> hey, uh, all right, so let's do some write-in questions here. Uh, and if, if, you're, if you come here to Zeppos and you write a question down, we will do everything we can to get this puppy on the air. That, that's Love fantastic. It. Love it. So, all right, Coach Smith, this is from John and Jennifer Mattoon. Great to see you guys here at Zeppos. Coach Smith, what is your anticipated impact of Clay's jersey retirement on, on our team? What do you uh, think? I think it just puts things in perspective, what can be achieved. And um, we need more, you know, legacy builders. And, like, Derek Lowe came down the Bay Area and came to our games and just trying to educate our guys on what's been done. Was he just people. there? Just now? Yeah. Oh, I missed him. Yeah, yeah, you missed him. Oh, yeah, I he missed was at, him. I was at Stanford. Oh, was yeah, he? Yeah, Derek was at Stanford. I saw him early. I saw him last year, but I missed him. Oh, yeah, he bad. snuck yeah. in there. Yeah, he did. Um, but all these guys, and they just have such pride in what they accomplished. And, and it's not so much about, hey, look at me. Um, I was on a really good team. It's like sure. they really enjoyed their experience at Pullman. And I, I think uh, 
Clay, the time he spent here, how meaningful it is to him and um, how it's impacted his career. And I think that's just kind of encompassing everything what this experience can be about. Follow-up question, and, and I'm curious, will Gervais finish the year with number one if number one goes to the rafters? What do you, yeah. What's the rub there? Did the, you put a little the, asterisk on it, a little, uh, little like first, Sharpie? First I heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> first, <laughs> first it dawned on me. Yeah. But that's a great question. Um, hey, whatever Clay wants. Right. If he right. says, hey, pull that jersey, I'll be like, <laughs> done. Church and, <laughs> Church and skins. Gervais, right, it's right. time. Yeah. Time to give it up. Yeah. But, uh, no, I imagine he'll let Gervais play play the year out. But, I, w- uh, I would think That's so. pretty cool that, it's, that uh, we're t- retiring that. It is going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, next question, and this is this is a, a theme here. Will he talk to the team while he's yes. in town? Clay will. Yeah. Okay. And they uh, – Whatever they ask me if I want to say, you kidding me? They're like, we went before or after practice. I said, I don't care if it's the middle of practice. So I'll stop <laughs> practice and, and uh, they'll hang on every word he has to say. And it's, I think it's really important for our guys to, to hear from him. For sure. Hey, uh, next question right in here from Zeppos. We off air, we're talking about this. We can get into it right sure. now as a segue. When will you meet Nick Rolovich, the new football coach? Do you know? I have no idea. But uh, I've heard great things about him, and, and there's some connections back to City College, San Francisco. People, Several people called me and said, hey, he's a great guy. And then the basketball coach in Hawaii, Ron Ganat, good friend of mine. And actually, we used to live together. And he said he's a really uh, great guy and a good friend. And, and Ron's been going through some uh, physical health issues. And mm. he said he, Nick's one of the guys that really reached out to him, make sure he's doing all right. So – all the good things and I've heard nothing but positive. So excited. My wife's excited. He has four kids. They're <laughs> in the same age group as, as mine. So hopefully in the, my 11 year old AU coach's son, it's Kirby, by the way, Kirby. is, yeah, is doing, doing research to see how athletic they are. What do we got coming Every, in the Everyone's like, who's Kirby? He's, yeah. he's a mutual friend. Yeah. 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 So, so it, it's a, it's a great, and I think they'll, it's, He'll love Pullman. Yeah, no, it's going to be uh, – it seems like a great fit. It's really exciting. And, boy, did Pat Chun get that done fast, huh? Mike Leach was just here, and now we've got a new head football coach You know, done yesterday. You know, Pat's pretty – he's pretty uh, clever. He knows what's going on yeah. out there. He's working always. Yeah, it's exciting. It's really exciting. All right, I'm, I have not had a f- full vetting of these, so I'm just okay, going to go roll through. I, I just, can handle any of them, I this promise. Is, this is rapid fire. We should do – we really should do, like, a trivia thing oh, and man. really put you on this – get, like, a bell – and, yeah. and yes or no, and get some fans. We get, might do that. Get creative. I'm get, all for do it. Do like a spinner? I, what about like a, a – I don't know if I can do eight more weeks of this, me and you. We need, we need, <laughs> we, we need, we need to too mix much. it up. All right, we'll do it. We'll do it. Um, uh, how much of an impact – oh, this is a good question. How much of an impact did fans make at the UCLA game? It was great. Uh, it was uh, – our, our kids really uh, responded to it, and, and I, think, I just think at the end of the game, like Noah was really playing well, and he – it, he's a very emotional player and, mm. and I think it's good for the crowd to see it and we felt it and, and I was excited because it it, it uh, you know how many people it is it's pretty loud it's good acoustics so I think this weekend we should have good turnout and it'll inspire our guys hopefully play their best besides a snow this is another write-in question That's for right. those listening besides a snow shovel what advice do you have for Rolovich about living in Pullman yeah go snow blower <laughs> it's a lot lot better than Save snow the snow I, I was out there scraping and I saw my neighbors with the <laughs> you know, I'm like oh, a yeah, rookie, rookie with the snow shovel. So I say, go snowblower. Don't be afraid to pay for the help. He can afford it. I love it. I love it. Why and how did you end up choosing basketball as your sport? Uh, Magic Johnson. Really? Uh, my dad, my mom and dad went to Michigan State. And uh, so, and I was actually a baseball guy first. And then my dad, as like 19, whatever. I actually might have been Kyle Macy. I might be exaggerating. But I do remember like trying to dribble on the back and being a big Magic Johnson fan when yeah. I was like eight years old and uh, actually got his autograph when I was like nine at the Far West Classic in Portland, Oregon. So oh, cool. those things that kind of stick to me. And then, then it's obviously one of the greatest players sure. of all time. Have you, it'll be fun to be, you know, Huntsman Center in Utah is where he and Bird, where Michigan yeah. State and Indian State had, yeah. the, had the, like, the, the game that's credited with – Making college basketball what it is today. Yeah, no, and, and it was funny because a lot of my friends were all Larry Bird guys, and I was always a Magic guy. Ah. I was always a, I was always a Magic guy because of Michigan State, and so that's kind of kind of what got me in it, and I never left. That's fun. That's yeah. really fun. What are some of the traits that make a player coachable? Uh, great attitude. I think just uh, you know, just guys that are pleasers. You know, guys that want to do well, want to want to please you they're usually very coachable um that doesn't always make them the best players mm-hmm. i mean sometimes the, the honoree 
honored guys are all right too. The, the stubborn mules that want to that the best competitors usually make the best players. But uh, and and I think everyone's coachable in the sense that uh, if they're if they're really about the team and they really want to do well and and really compete, that the, you can you can steer them in the right direction because they always take away playing time usually. Yeah. <laughs> usually <it works. laughs> if they, if they don't, if they, don't if they don't if they don't care about that, then you're in trouble. But, <laughs> right. But right. Um, it's usually attitude, and and the, we always say we want guys that are fountains, not drains, and guys that are willing to extend themselves and be givers. Uh, that's important to us. And like I said, I think that's the drains start to – the ones that suck the energy out of the room and the team. And, you know, if you cater to that, you'll have that. And, it's, and I'll, I'll, I steal from uh, Coach Leach all the time. You're mm -hmm. either, either tolerating or coaching it. Mm -hmm. So uh, try to not tolerate that, those kind of things and try to uh, coach the good behaviors and good attitudes. That usually does it. For the world's most refreshing beer, 21 means 21. Celebrate responsibly with Coors Light, Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. We'll take a quesadilla break and come back here live at Zeppo's next with, with Coach Smith. Motivated. <laughs>this is the U.S. Bank Cougar Coaches Show on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Catch, drop, step, hammer time. With Coach Smith, here's Matt Chazanow. It is that time of the week. We're back here live at Zeppo's Talking Ball here with Coach Smith. Got some Twitter questions for you. Coach Tim Watts wants to know or, or wants to uh, raise your awareness. Okay. Did you know there is a Jeff Pollard fan club? I do know that. You did know that. I did yeah. not. I did not realize. Do you know what? Like, you know, how do you can join or what? Where? No, I'm the takes? biggest fan. The I mean, big, I, okay. I haven't yeah. joined yet, but I'm yeah. a big fan of that yeah. guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard, hard not to be. He's oh, been, he's a tough kid. In a lot of ways, he's been our most important player. Mm -hmm. He's really done a great job defensively and just solid and captain. Done great. What other ways? Like, what? What? You know? What do you think makes him? <laughs> Such a unique – No, that's okay. So that case did didn't go down. Okay. <laughs> it's, but go ahead. Um, I mean, he's he's all that and, and more just as far as, like, uh, he really strives to be the best he can be in everything he does. And he really – when we talk about having a coachable attitude and being a pleaser, I mean, I, I really haven't been around too many, especially in transition year. I mean, he literally um, comes in the office. He'll watch film. He'll study it. He'll – and then he'll get on the court. He'll do it and he'll also help others. So mm – -hmm. He's really taken upon himself and to make this a, a good experience and being a senior year and being a good teammate. Yeah, he's a, he's really – I mean, of a guy who I've seen work his tail off, you know, he, he's at the top. His, he, he really wasn't going to shoot anything his freshman year. Yeah, sure. He did, didn't want to, and now he can – you know, he's really worked at it. Yeah, no, and it's just uh, 
what hard work will do, build confidence. You know, confidence, some people are maybe born with it, but you just hard work and, and getting seeing results and getting the feedback and growing their confidence, and, and uh, he's a joy to coach. Next question from J.D. Treat wants to know uh, if you like Rolos, the candy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've never had them. You never had a I've Rolo? I've never had a Rolo. You can roll a Rolo till you pal. <laughs> I've never Chocolate had Chocolate cover ca- coated caramel. Love, you, love the, you love the Rolo. Come on, man. Everyone knows a Rolo, man. <laughs> I Come didn't on. know. I didn't know. I've never Come on. It. you got to get it. You must be too young. See, I, I don't know. Yeah, so you're I too young know. if you hadn't had a Rolo. I, I, so is it just chocolate and caramel? Is that yeah. It? yeah. I mean, just that as the great. jingle goes. So yeah. <laughs> Chocolate cover coated caramel. Uh, it's I'm, a little chewy. That's try okay. to like it, but I mean, like if you had a filling, you could lose one. Well, that'd be bad. So that's a bad. Like there's certain, there's certain break. Like you're lear- like you're kind of getting it now with the quesadilla. Yeah. There's certain foods that are really good for breaks in broadcasts. That sounds that's like no chance. Not one of them. No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. Like, what, what's a good food? A good ones that you want like you want like crunchy yeah. and quick to yeah. chew, like a quick what? chew. Like your worst is a jerky. Yeah, like no, a be like, no, and no, I no. and I told I, I totally hung Brinker out to dry during football this year. Coming back from halftime, I just I got too comfortable, and I was I mistimed the bite. Jerry was Jerry remembers, and I I just had that moment. I didn't know I'm not a it professional like well. you, but I was like <laughs> that cheese was just like I'm I'm hoping this goes down. That's part of the deal. Could be, could yeah. be it could be really embarrassing on the yeah the radio show. And I don't to, like to eat. I don't like to eat on game days. So I just at all. I don't like if I I try to avoid it. I, I do not like to do it. It just I, I get I don't know breakfast. You're, if it's a night like, if it's a night game, I'll eat breakfast. If it's a noon kick or a noon tip, no. I I won't. Eat. I'll have some coffee and let's go. Yeah, that's, I, I just that's, I don't know. That's psycho. But di- di- You're di- psycho. Di- <laughs> we got a sociopath. No. There. <laughs> You're not playing. You're not taking the kickoff, man. You're not, I just want no. You to know. I just can't. Right. I don't want to. You know the digestion pro. Like you, yeah, you get all I tired. Did, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know how much went into the. You know broadcasting game. Oh, no, I do. yeah, I get all I thought you were just in. yamming away, well, but now I know it's, a, it, I, it's I like, a, like prep for a game. <laughs> yeah, that's well, I mean, ideally it looks all nonchalant and you're just ah, You're good, playing. you're good, because <laughs> I just, I really thought you were getting paid just to talk. I didn't, I didn't know that you had to, I love it. it was like a, an athlete, like it's game day, man. I gotta <laughs> get my mic. I'm gonna have to send this Do you clip. do like the the vo- vocalizing like an actor, like no, the, yeah, no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Is that no, you're in the no, mirror? No, no, now I got no, a picture no, you in the mirror no, no, doing no. all the vo- vocal. Yes, no, I believe no. so. No, that, no, that's that's uh, that's what that's what Jess and Brink do. Well, yeah, and I'll send him this clip. Yeah, yeah perfect, for sure. perfect. Elo, that's what Elo does in the Elo. In, yeah, Elo yeah. down the concourse. He's getting it ready. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Hey, this is a question. This is a question here, and this is kind of a a little more philosophical. Uh, yes, sir. Somebody here started in a new job in Pullman about half a year ago, uh, had to change some initial objectives and plans, which sure. kind of yeah. speaks to how basketball season can go sometimes. Have you changed yours as you've gotten to know this job better, objectives and plans, like like since coming yeah. here based on what you expected versus what you've I, experienced? Honestly, I've ha- I had a pretty good perspective on what would entail a job. I know some of the challenges. And just because I've known, I think the last three coaches have been here going back there. Doesn't know Dick Bennett that well, but definitely knew Tony, mm-hmm. Ken, and, and Ernie. So nothing surprised in that sense in, in knowing the challenges. But, uh, you know, readjusting, like, it's it's better in a lot of ways, I thought. I mean, I love Pullman. I mean, not, mm-hmm. not knowing living here and just the, the community has been great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm getting T-shirts that say, I heart Pullman. <laughs> I love it. Friendliest place on earth. I'm yeah, rocking yeah. with So you can, next week you show up, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> but, uh no, no freebies, but uh, <laughs> um, that, and that's what I said. Like, and that's the most important thing for my family. It's been great that way, and, and, and readjusting the, um, you know, just the day to day. This third time I've taken over a program, and, and it's it's familiar in the sense that you're you're, you know, the the cliche is changing culture or whatever. And I'd like to think of just more creating culture and and for our guys and what we're going to be about and having a great attitude and work ethic and guys that really want to be here. So I, those are always the goals. So that uh, the results usually come out of those goals and how we're striving to do that. And, and you know, I feel great. Like I said, I, I definitely enjoy this team, enjoy coaching them. And the recruiting part's challenging. We know that. Um, but it's it's finding the right guys that really want to be here. And um, those things have been able to take care of themselves. Do, do you think that 
you will, you know, as you learn the logistics better, literally logistically, like which flights to take, where, where, you know, the, you'll be more efficient kind of figuring out how you want to go about it with Der- with Derek Phelps. And yeah, Jim no, Sean. no, that, that, I don't know if that ever gets completely sorted out. <laughs> right. It's tough. I like Jim's leaving from Lewiston tonight. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, and then flying back into Spokane. And it's amazing. Has to take it one way. Yeah, like those things, you know it. It's one thing to know it. Be knowledgeable and then actually have to do it. To that's, live it. Yeah, live it. That's that's definitely um, a challenge, and everyone's had to that's been here has had to deal with it. And and uh, it's been some pre- pretty creative guys have been successful. Going back to Coach Raveling, you know, he 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 really uh, pioneered it and and just embraced it. And he, even when I talked to him, he said this was his most rewarding job he had of all. And so I I can understand that. It's a great. We'll have to do it on the three. I, I won't do it without Craig. Yeah. But Craig's recruiting story with George Raveling from <laughs> Odessa, Texas, from JUCO is phenomenal. He met when he it, met Coach at a, some camp somewhere that Coach was. Yeah, it's, it, it's great. Well, one of our rules is um, climate-wise, we like to get him from a place that's actually same or colder. Really? <laughs> do you really? Is that really? Uh, Vova, Vova is coming from Ukraine. He said, "Not cold." That's great. <laughs> That's cool. Not bad. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Not, not bad. So we got to look. We got to probe Alaska pretty hard. I we love better, it. We better dig in there. I, well, there have been some great Alaska no ball questions. players. Yeah. Carlos no, Boozer no. and yeah, Trajan yeah. Langdon. And good knowledge. No question. No the, question. I've coached a couple. They've been good, too. And but the, like, Canada right now is great. metaphorically the hottest, you know, in terms of cold countries. Canada basketball yeah. right now is as hot as it gets. I, I cannot figure it out for the life of me. I've tried to explain it, but there, it's really exploded and uh, – I think there's only 30 million people. It's like the size of California, yeah. population-wise. Yeah. And yeah. I've had two number one well, and picks. It, and, and it's and all down here toward the border. You know, way in northern Canada, there's not a ton up no, there. There's it's no all human beings up yeah, there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing about, Mostly, as they like to say, the GTA, the greater Toronto area. Oh, interesting. Ah, GTA. Yeah, yeah, so they give you a little basketball yeah. scoop there. But that? really, it's um, – and we're in, we're digging in there pretty hard. And and, uh, and there's been some good Western – I mean, Steve Nash was – Vancouver. Victor, and uh, Kelly – Linux. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There's been uh, yeah, gosh, so Anthony so. Bennett, and you know. I'm just on Western Canada, which isn't far from us. Yeah, there's yeah. actually a kid. Who, uh, probably, there's a kid from of all places. He's pretty good. We're looking at. I think he's from Manitoba. Is that out west? I don't know where Manitoba is. <laughs> is there anybody, anybody here? Yeah, is am I getting the not? It's yeah, a little bit west. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Look, so west enough. Right. West enough, enough to yeah, we'll loom, we'll lump it he in. He felt yeah. like this was close for him. Yeah. That's where he's he's playing high school in the eastern like down in Florida or whatever and so uh that's anyway. cool. Yeah, no, it's neat. That is neat. Hey, uh, post-game party never stops at Northern Quest with 24-7 gaming, over a dozen restaurants and lounges, luxury rooms, and more details at northernquest.com. We'll take a break, come back. Cougs are playing Thursday night against the eighth-ranked Ducks. We'll get into that in a little bit here with Coach Smith live at Zeppos coming up next.
world's most refreshing beer. All right, let's talk a little bit about the Oregon Ducks. We're back here live at Zeppo's Talking Hoops here with Coach Smith. The Cougs take on the Ducks and then the Beavers on Saturday. The most immediate obstacle here is Oregon, a 6 p.m. tip, a, a 5.30 airtime for the Cougs hosting a very good Oregon Duck team, aren't they? What do, you, what do you see early on here? I know it's Tuesday for a Thursday game. What do you know about the Ducks this um, year? You know what, uh, the, just their leader is really impressive, Peyton Pritchard, now being a senior point guard. And I think he's <clears throat> like the eighth-ranked player in the country as far as like Ken Palm, you know. So he's – and plays the most important position. So uh, that'll be that'll be the test to see if we can keep that guy – you know, he's going to score. He's going to do well, but he's averaging 20. And if he's going to get those, he's got to make him do it inefficiently somehow and really game plan to try to slow him down. And then, obviously, they got good talent everywhere. They're the, and they're, but more importantly, the fourth-ranked offensive team in the country. So it'll be a challenge to, to slow them down. So Peyton Pritchard is 12 assists away from uh, 1,500 career points with 600 assists. That's only been done in the pack by Gary Payton, Jordan McLaughlin, who just, just played at USC, Damon Stoudemire, Tyus Edney, and Jason Gardner at Arizona. Wow. So that he, he'll, you know, he's going to get there. He's, good company. That's a pretty good list. Yeah, no, no. I, you know, he's I, – I said something like the kid that played at Arizona a few years ago. It's in the NBA play at TJ McConnell. Mm-hmm. Only played two years in Arizona. But, right. you know, it, it's somewhere between him and Steve Nash. I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> or whatever. I just think he's just a yeah. strong, fast – steady experienced guy that super that looks smart right? yeah he just he doesn't change his expression much so he's not too high not too low and he's just good competitor and got a lot of a lot of success you mentioned their offense 78 points a game defensively it's been a little bit more high scoring right in the middle of the pack at, at 66 points a game some years like a couple years ago you may remember fans may remember they had chris boucher mm-hmm. who was this really unique player like a 6'10 shooting guard almost. Yeah, yeah stretch. Kinda. He could rim protect and make threes. With Kenny Wooten, and, and, and he's in the G League right now and just yeah. actually signed a contract, I think, with the Knicks. And, and he's yeah. he's like 6'9, pogo stick, and yeah. super long. And they just, they've just they been – sometimes they'll Jordan start to – Jordan Bell. Jordan Bell, who, yeah, yeah no, who was no. actually at uh, Matt Court when we were there a couple of years ago firing T-shirts off at half court. It was like this <laughs> – there's a lot going on here right now. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and they're they're, they're good. I mean, they they definitely uh, and they're recruiting. They're trying to find those um, multi-dimensional guys, long length. Uh, and they have, this year they have just two stone five men that are rim protectors in Okoro and uh, Dante, who just got eligible. So they'll probably Dante will probably get better as as the season moves on. But uh, but the other ones like Wooten could cover the entire court and. Boucher having the, to stretch out and make threes and stuff like that. But they're awfully – they're very green in some areas because a lot of those guys are new. They, they yeah. added a lot over the summer. But having that rudder is really kind of, you know, with Pritchard being the, the experience he has and being able to put that thing together. I think that's where they came on last year too. And I think the game they won at Michigan 71-70 in overtime. I'm pretty sure Pritchard scored their last 15 or 16 points, all of them, straight. <laughs> by him. Just took the game off. Uh, We've talked enough about him. Okay? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. right. No, actually, we we're watching. He hit like a 35 footer. Texas Southern had a chance to beat him, and he hits like a 40 seconds left. It's a long three. So he, he's obviously the guy that, when the chips are down or they need to make plays, he's going to be the guy that's going to try to win the game. How would you compare, um, in terms of some of the best late game players? You've had some really good ones, Della Vadova. Who are the best late game players you've coached? Uh, you know what, uh, Mickey McConnell was. I don't know many, many people might remember him. He was WCC Player of the Year, but he was like the mm. six foot point guard that was really tough. He played with Mills. They came in the same year. Huh. Mills left early, but he was the guy that hit a late game winning shot to beat win at Gonzaga. I think in the McCarthy Center. I think it was a, might have been the first conference loss ever in the McCarthy Center. Wow. So, but he had to hit a big one there. Uh, Mills, Mills was really good. He, he he had two game winners when I was there. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about it a little bit. But uh, um, those are when you got guys that can kind of raise you know raise their level at the, the end of the game. There, that's pretty special. And you see a lot of those guys and getting to march in close games. Uh, they're pretty valuable because the teams get pretty evened out, and it's the guys almost like we saw last night in the football. Two pretty equal teams and. That Joe Burrow is ridiculous. Good player, boy, <laughs> and 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 has a ton, had a ton of time. And they were LSU. Uh, they and now, like, if he doesn't make it, my my dad's like, he's a definitely NFL. I said, man, you can't. Count. I mean, I saw, 
I thought I would, you said the same thing about Matt Liner. Sure. You yeah. said, like, can't yeah. miss. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. play. Well, and, and some of it also is, and this is a great point, and there's a promo for a show that uh, airs that the, that the same college sports now, that yeah. they'll love that we're, we're pumping them right now. Good, but perfect. A former UCLA quarterback named Wayne Cook, who's a great guy, yeah. and he's, on, he's on there, and he may, makes a really interesting point. When you're the best college player, generally, and almost by rule, you go to the worst team. Yep. And so you go from the best – talent around yes. you, offensive line, receivers, and all these pieces, to the team that struggled the most. That's why they had the number one overall pick. And, and, and it's very different. Uh, it's, it, it's, right? it's a totally different being, a next level and all that stuff. I use this guy. I use a lot of football guys for basketball. Just like I was in the Bay Area when Alex Smith was the number one pick, and I watched that guy get crushed yeah. for four years. Yeah. Different coordinators. I think he had nine different coordinators <laughs> his first nine years. Something like that. Yeah. It was just it was just I felt sorry for him. I just like he's bad. Yeah. I was like, he's no good. I just like he's just he, No, he's good. He rallied up to be yeah. now a poor guy had a, he a had leg a thing, terrible but, leg injury. Yeah, yeah, I hope he never plays again because he's he's done enough. You're right, right. He's done enough. Yeah. But but those are those are neat stories to even use with our players and like overcoming and we're, you know we're in that process of getting better and just trying to improve every day this kind of speaks also you know this year specifically and Coug Cougs will really latch onto this one and then we're up against a break we need to take it but Luke Falk got put in a brutal situation with the Jets I mean for three games and the Jets have a long storied uh, history of torturing quarterbacks me. I mean they've, they've been doing this for 50 years I've got a guy on my staff Derek Phelps yeah Jets fan who, that's who's right a huge Jets fan yeah and, uh, yeah, no, it's a brutal organization. It's they're, hard. They're perpetually, <laughs> perpetually hard. bad. They're really tough. And Darnold it's, had a tar hard time. Everybody has a hard time. Yeah, no, Darnold no, did. No, no, and so no. I felt bad for I'm watching Luke just get, no, get creamed. It's, it's, it's hard, you know. Well, I think Minshew's first uh, exhibition game. I think got had well, like he got, six. He got lit up, and he I was like, his helmet popped off. I yeah, think. yeah. I remember, I was like, gosh, dang. Well, yeah. yeah. And then that's again a testament of his persistence and yeah. fearlessness, and not that didn't shake him, and ended up having a good year. I wonder where he is right now in the RV across the country. I wonder what city garden. We need to have him call in. He's in yeah. Vegas right now. Is he really? That's amazing. That's bit, great. It's a great town to be in right now. That'd be fun. You just that's, saw that he's in Vegas. That's a little scary that he, he's fantastic. in That's fantastic, yeah. Is he going as an Elvis impersonator? Or oh, is he? Uh, <laughs> well, Nick Rolovich could bring one. Do you hear about <laughs> Nick Rolovich with the Elvis impersonator? Oh, I did not know Coach this. Coach Rolovich brought an Elvis impersonator to media day. Uh, in Mountain West Media Day. Terrific. I can't wait to talk to Coach. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's, it's good. Gonna, it's gonna I, like, great. I like the sounds of him already. Super fun. It's going to be super fun. We'll take a break. Come back. We're live here with Coach Smith at Zeppos.
knowledge. Put your trust in a bank that's been focused on serving the people and businesses in Washington and all across the country since 1863. That's U.S. Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. With Coach Smith, here's Matt Chazanow. Back here at Zeppos, we are talking ball here. Need to do a quick segment, and then we're going to take a break. But I got a, a Twitter question for you from Matt, and he wants to know – if you got to go to your favorite place in the Bay Area to eat while you were there because you just lived there for about six years? Or you did know, you find yeah, your, no, no, did you have I, a hot spot? I, I go further back than the Bay Area, and I, there's one place that uh, I'll promote it again, Original Joe's in North Beach. It's my spot. What's the, what kind of food is it? It's uh, Italian. So yeah. what did you get? What's I didn't go. Oh, you <laughs> didn't get a chance to I just, go. Oh. I'm depressed. I didn't get it. Was, yeah. It's in San Francisco. I mean, we're Got in Berkeley. It. We're right. Stanford. So I didn't get a chance. I was what a would you get? Like, did you have like your? Did you have like a table and a like it's your? It's like seat an old school. It's like a, It's just like a, something with Frank Sinatra would be. You know, you oh. walk in. It. Yeah, it's like an old school nice. Italian joint. I usually you get some chops or you know yeah. do a little pasta and little, you get a, it's a great kind of you get a steak and they get your side is like a. Ravioli. Love I mean, it. it's that kind of place. Love it. It's good. Love it. All right, we got you, to. You, you, it'd be like Syracuse, something in upstate New York. Oh, yeah. I'd love yeah, it. Yeah. I'd love yeah, yeah. it. I'd love it. It'd be delicious. Uh, Jim Beheim's favorite restaurant in Syracuse is, uh, is Italian. Is it Italian? It's There's Joe, a lot Joe. of Italians in upstate New York. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. There you go. <laughs> right, we'll take a break. We'll take our uh, final segment coming up next. few minutes to go here at Zeppo's Talking Ball here with Coach Smith. You're clear. Here in the show, it's the Kooks taking on the Ducks and the Beavers. I, I didn't. We haven't touched on the Beavers yet. They just hammered Arizona, and, and a, a Wildcat team that's projected toward the top of the pack. What do you make of OSU with, with Coach's son, Trace Tinkle? Uh, they're really good. They're they're again an experienced team. And uh, Ben Lasky informed me that I was all worried about Oregon being the fourth best offensive team. He said, he goes, he goes, well. I couldn't hear what he said. I said, well, they're eighth. I said, well, I know they're eighth in the country. I know Oregon's eighth. He goes, no, Oregon State's the eighth best offensive team in the country. Yeah, so yeah. we'll have our hands full defensively. And they're, they're experienced with uh, Thompson and uh, Tinkle and then their, their big fella. Uh, Kyler Kelly. Kelly. Yeah, they're, they're good. They're big. They're long. But we'll see probably a lot of zone. That's usually what they play. And, um, but they're really efficient offensively. How similar is Trace Tinkle to C.J. Ellaby? Similar. Uh, lefty. <laughs> Kind of plays all over the place and plays hard. Kind of their their leader, um, and when they need to get a basket, they're going through him. And um, it's pretty neat, pretty neat relationship they have. I imagine with playing for your dad for four years, and now he's starting to go past Gary Payton on the, in the record books, which is doesn't even sound believable. But he's a heck of a player, and I, I mean, imagine he might be Pac-12 Player of the Year if it was. I haven't studied enough, but 
He's, gonna, he's definitely in the running for yeah, it. It'll, him, be, it'll him, be him, we'll Pey- Peyton see, Pritchard. Yeah, to, uh, who else will be? Yeah. McKinley Wright will, will be a possibility yeah, in guys. Colorado. Colorado yeah, yeah. just beat Utah by 39, by the way. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Uh, you know, the Cougs, Coug- we, Coug- we had a tough one in Maples and lost by 26. Made and, us feel better. Yeah, boy, you look over <laughs> at that score, it's like, no, it well, was, okay. Yeah, yeah the Michigan State got beat by 29. So yeah, they, Purdue hammered Michigan State. And, and that was a mi- top 10 Michigan State team. You know. Yeah, I know. No, there's – it, it can happen. Yeah, I guess what what is that? What's the anatomy of a blow, of a blowout like that? Like thirty nines, you beat a team by forty. That's a big number. It is hard, uh, honestly. I, you know what? One of the best. I was at St. Mary's for nine years, and I think it's been fifteen years. Worst defeat he'd ever had was twenty five. Amazing. Till okay. last year. Till Ma- till Maples. Till I'm talking about. No, it's Randy Bennett. I was like, oh, that's, okay. that was an amazing stat. Wow. That is. Amazing. And he got beat forty four by Gonzaga wow. last year. Wow. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, wow. <laughs> but like, it's just. It's amazing. It was, it Not many of those. Huge thanks to Jerry Kylo to get us on the air. Jared Prengruber helps us out with so much. Jake Eisenberg back in the studio. Thank you so much for everybody who came here. It's great to see you. Thank you, Coach, very much. Appreciate it. See you Thursday yep. at 5.30 airtime, 6 o'clock tip against the Ducks in Beasley.